Hey everyone, welcome to the second video in our series in which we're coding a Vision Pro wall art app from scratch. And in the last video, we left off with what you see in the simulator on the left here. We have a bit of text showing and we have these two spheres that are part of the Vision OS template that we implemented last time. And so what I want to do in this video is implement what we see in the simulator on the right here. In particular, what I want to do is implement the canvas which we have on the wall and the character that is floating in space and following our head movement. And so in order to do this, um, let's head back to Xcode and let's actually begin by deleting the package folder on the left here. Now we want to go to the GitHub repository of the final project which you can then download as a zip file. And I've already downloaded it, so I won't do this again. But once you've done that, you can head back to Xcode, go to File, Add Package Dependency, Add Local, and then you want to navigate to where you've downloaded the project to, which for me is under Downloads. You can go into the project, and you want to head to the Packages uh, folder, and then you want to select Reality Kit Content, and then you want to say Add Package. And we want to confirm that, and then you should see it come up on the left here. And then we can go to Package, and we can tap on Open in Reality Composer Pro, and then what you should see is that we have a project browser here at the bottom with several different files. And we want to go on the immersive.usda file. We can double click on that and you should see this scene right here with a character uh, which is called assistant which is standing on a cube. And remember that this uh, scene is called immersive and it is identified by that file name which you see down below here immersive.usda. And so if we head back to Xcode now and go to the immersive view, you should see that we uh, instantiate this reality view by creating an entity named immersive, which looks for this entity in the reality kit content bundle. And then it adds this scene to the content property of the reality view. And so if we want to run this, we should expect to see the 3D character that we just imported from the final project in our new project here. And so let's run this and we can actually see that we have the character showing up at the bottom right here. And this makes sense because in Vision OS, when you add an entity to a, a reality view, it will by default be added to the origin of the coordinate space. And in a full immersive space, the origin of the coordinate space is at the user's feet. And so um, it is showing up right here. But as we know, what we really want is to have the character be sort of in the user's line of sight and visible at all times. And so we need to implement this now. So let's head back to Xcode. And in order to do this, um, we will create uh, an anchor entity which we can then add the character to to make sure that it's anchored in the location that we want it to. The first thing I'm going to do is change the structure a bit of the closure. And I'm going to replace the if let statement with a do catch statement. And it's just a bit cleaner as we add more logic into uh, the do statement right here. But this has the same effect. It's just loading the entity called immersive in the reality kit content bundle. And so what we really want is we want to anchor the character to the head. And to achieve this, let's create a state variable called character entity. And we're going to First, create a head anchor, which is of type anchor entity, and we're going to position it at the user's head. And we're going to position it 
70 centimeters along the x-axis, negative 0.35 meters along the y-axis, and negative 1 meters along the z-axis. And now we're just going to return the head anchor. And then what we can do is we can just change the logic down here. And instead of adding the immersive entity to the content, we want to add the immersive entity to our character entity and then add our character entity to the content of the reality view. And now if we reload this, we should see that the character is anchored to the user's head and positioned the way we like. Now, one thing you'll notice compared to what the final product here is that the character is not looking at us right now. And you can see that it is on the right here. And so let's implement that now. And to do that, let's uh, create a function down here called rotate entity around y axis. And the parameters to this function are an entity and an angle. And what this will do is it'll create a variable called current transform, which is the entity's transform property. Then it will create a quaternion representing a rotation around the y axis, given the angle. And we can then apply that rotation to the current transform and place the current transform property and uh, assign it to the entity's transform property. And so now what we need to do is go to the character entity and up here we want to call this function. And we can do that by calling immersive.view.rotate entity around y axis, passing in the head anchor and then the radiance by which we want to rotate the character by. And the radiance is calculated using negative 30, which represents uh, the degrees, 30 degrees um, times float dot pi divided by 180. And so if we run this now, we should see that the character is looking at us because it's rotated uh, by 30 degrees. And so that's actually all we have to do to implement this final product here, which we see on the right. So we actually have the same outcome at the moment. So now let's move on to implementing the canvas on the wall. And to do that, let's head back into Xcode. And what we wanna do is create another state variable. And this state variable we'll call plane entity. And in this entity, we're going to create one that looks as follows. The first thing we're going to do is create a new anchor entity. But instead of anchoring it to the head, we're going to anchor it to a plane, specifically a vertical plane with a classification of wall that has a minimum bounds of uh, 60 centimeters um, uh, in width and height. And then we're going to create a plane mesh, which we can do by calling mesh resource dot generate plane. And we're going to give it a width of 3.75 meters and a depth of 2.625 meters and a corner radius of 0 0.1. Now you might be, uh, wondering why we're giving a depth, not a height. And the reason for this is that we're anchoring this plane mesh to uh, a wall anchor, which is normalized to the surface of the wall. And that means that um, we need to have a depth instead of a height here, because the Y axis is actually going um, is perpendicular to the wall. And so we can create this mesh and we also uh, can create a color for now with the color green. Um, 
and then we can instantiate a model entity with that plane mesh and this material, uh, which is a simple material with the color green. And we're going to give it a name, canvas, and then we're going to add the plane entity to the wall anchor and return the wall anchor. And then once we've done that, we can go down to the reality view and we can add it to the content. And let's rerun this and see what we get. And what we get is a green canvas on the wall anchored in the way we expect. Now, the way this works is that um, basically once the reality view loads, it will look for the first place that kind of fits the criteria of the anchor entity. And so we don't have fine grained control over the position with this implementation. And so, you know, uh, for the purposes of this demo and this project, uh, you can just sort of like reposition your camera and um, rerun the app. And then sort of the first place it will uh, find, it can anchor the plane to. And so this looks quite nice and it's actually doing exactly what we want. Um, we have this green plane here, but you know, obviously what's missing is that we don't have the think different poster um, showing up as the content of our canvas. So let's implement that now. And to do that, let's go back to Xcode. And what we wanna do is implement a new function and we can scroll down here. And this function is called load image material and it's going to return a simple material. And what we're going to do is um, create a variable called texture and we're going to assign it a texture resource and we're going to load uh, an image um, with the image URL which is passed in, in the parameter. Then we're going to create a material which is of type simple material and a color which is of type simple material dot base color and the texture of this um, base color is a material parameters texture and it takes as its input the texture resource which is the image URL or rather the image at the image URL. And so we can assign that color then to the material.color property and then we can return the material um, again of type simple material. And then what we can do is we can go back up to our plane entity and instead of assigning a material of simple material with a color green, we can assign a material um, by calling immersiveview.load image material with an image URL of think different. And so you might have noticed we don't actually have an image URL of think different. And so what we want to do is just go to the folder where you've downloaded the final project and you can just head to the file um, generative wall art resources assets.exe assets think different image set and then just take the think different dot png file and drag it into our project here and so once that's here we can see that we have our image in our project now we can rerun this and once we've rerun it, we should be able to see our canvas now with that poster. So that's awesome because uh, we've now implemented basically the kind of like basic layout of the final project here, which is the canvas on the wall and the character anchored to the head movement and rotated so that it looks at the user. And so I'll leave it in this video uh, for now and I'll see you in the next one in which we're going to take a look at Swift UI attachments. So I'll see you there.